Hello Aluxers! This is a special series we're doing here on Alux, where every day we showcase the life story of some of the most important figures in tennis. Today we're looking at 15 Things You Didn't Know About Wimbledon. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hello Aluxers, thanks for joining us once again. Today we have a fact-filled video that's going to make you an expert on the most famous lawn tennis competition in the world. Wimbledon is located in the southwest of London and began back in 1877, making it the oldest tennis competition and the only Grand Slam title still played on grass. The competition is quintessentially British in its nature. The royal family sponsor and attend the event, whilst all players and spectators are expected to stick to a strict dress code. With all the pomp and pride that comes with anything typically British, etiquette and discipline are juxtaposed rather awkwardly beside a fervent conservatism that can often border on sexist or racist in our modern, liberal society. Nevertheless, the competition captures the hearts of millions worldwide each year and is visited in person by around 180,000 fans every year. But that's enough with the intro, let's get to it, shall we? If you're new here, welcome! Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. Number 1. Wimbledon was originally an amateur competition for private members. The first Wimbledon Championships were held for amateur private members of the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club back in 1877. The club had been formed seven years earlier, but only as a croquet club. However, as tennis began to grow in popularity, one area was designated to the new sport. The first competition had 22 entrants, and all were British men. All serves were taken underarm, and Spencer Gore defeated William Marshall in the final in straight sets, 6-1, 6-2, and 6-4. Number 2. Wimbledon became the only Grand Slam played on grass in 1988. In 1988, the Australian Open switched its playing surface from grass to hard court, making Wimbledon the only Grand Slam title still competed for on lawn. The other Grand Slams are the French and US Opens. The French at Roland Garros is played on clay, and the US Open is played on hard court as well. This makes winning all four competitions in the same year extremely challenging and one of the most coveted prizes in professional tennis. Number 3. The Championship Moved Locations in 1921 in 1921, the championship moved from Warple Road to Church Road. It was only a few miles away, but the ground was more even, and the soil was apparently better for growing more luscious grass. The All England Lawn Tennis Club hauled in strips of turf from a small seaside town called Silloth, which was located about 350 miles north of London. Number 4. Prize money for men and women was made equal in 2007. 2007 was the first year where the winner of the men's singles competition received the same prize money as the winner of the women's competition. Up until that point, the men were paid more. In 2006, the president of the All England Lawn Tennis Club said it was only fair that men were paid more because they played five set matches, whereas women only played three. The comments were met with fierce backlash, resulting in even prize money the very next year. Number 5. Wimbledon has a tradition of strawberries and cream. Spectators have been eating strawberries and cream at Wimbledon ever since the championships began back in 1877. The archetypal refreshment is an inextricable part of a true British summer. Spectators broke records at the 2018 championships by collectively consuming over 34,000 kilograms of strawberries and 10,000 gallons of cream. This undoubtedly bolsters the agricultural and dairy industries of the UK considerably. Number 6. Wimbledon has often been hampered by rain. The English summer is notoriously unpredictable, and many past Wimbledon championships have been delayed by rain. The problem was partially solved in 2009 by installing a retractable roof on Centre Court. 
Nonetheless, all the other courts remain subjected to the elements. The 2017 and 18 competition, however, saw hardly a cloud in the sky above the City of London. In fact, spectators were treated to some of the hottest temperatures the competition has ever experienced. Number 7. Wimbledon has a history of racism and anti-Semitism. Wimbledon's membership policy has shown racism, sexism, and anti-Semitism in the past. Black people were completely banned from even competing in the competition until 1951. Jews were banned until 1952. In fact, Angela Buxton believes that prejudices still exist in the All England Lawn Tennis Club. Being Jewish, she applied to become a member back in 1952 and has remained on the waiting list for over half a century. Whilst the club has done a fantastic job of preserving many of the British traditions that make Wimbledon so special, racism, sexism, and anti-Semitism should not be among them. Number 8. The men's and women's finals in 2018 caused controversy. The scheduling of the men's and women's finals for the 2018 competition was steeped in controversy. Due to the five-set semi-final thriller between John Eisner and Kevin Anderson, the other semi-final between Djokovic and Nadal was delayed. The result was the match had not finished before the Wimbledon curfew of 11 p.m., so as a result, the match resumed in center court at 1 p.m., even though the women's final was scheduled to start at 2 p.m. The All England Tennis Club had already insisted that the men's final start time of 1 p.m. would not budge for any reason. Social media blew up with people accusing the organizers of blatant sexism. Number 9. Keeping the lawns at Wimbledon in perfect condition takes complicated science. The science behind keeping Wimbledon's lawns looking so pristine is extremely complicated. The championship lasts only two weeks, but there are over 20 full-time staff employed all year round in order to maintain the quality of the grass. The seeds used have been genetically modified in order to benefit from all the advantages of varying strains of grass. That's how Wimbledon grass can have the robust nature of grass native to the African plains, as well as the springy quality of grass originating from the prairies of North America. Before the tournament starts, the caretakers also make sure that every blade is cut exactly to 8 millimeters in length. Number 10. Wimbledon brought in around $300 million in revenue in 2018. The $300 million made by Wimbledon in 2018 was split between broadcasting rights, ticket sales, and sponsorship deals. The U.S. Open makes much more money than Wimbledon because it can seat 23,000 for the final, while Wimbledon Center Court has a capacity of 15,000. On the other hand, the U.S. Open seizes every opportunity to make money from sponsorship deals by emblazoning logos wherever possible. The All England Lawn Tennis Competition hopes to preserve tradition and magnify the beauty of such luscious green lawns, and Aluxers, one of Wimbledon's all-time greats, has to be Roger Federer. If you're interested in him, check out our 15 Things You Didn't Know About Roger Federer video by clicking in the top right corner. Number 11. The first color broadcast in Europe came from Wimbledon. Wimbledon was the first live broadcast of a color television sports event, and the first color broadcast in the entirety of Europe. On July 1st, one of the matches from the Wimbledon Championships became the first color television sports event to be broadcast in the UK. The match was played between the Englishman Roger Taylor and the South African Cliff Drysdale. In 2018, just 50 years later, matches were broadcast digitally in 4K all over the world. Number 12. Only two Brits have won the men's singles since 1936. Fred Perry and Andy Murray are the only British competitors to win the men's singles competition at a Wimbledon since 1936. Despite the fact that Wimbledon championships couldn't be more British in culture, native competitors have rarely been able to capitalize on the home advantage. Fred Perry won in 1936, and Andy Murray won in 2013 and 16. In addition, no British woman has won the women's singles competition since Virginia Wade back in 1977. Number 13. 
Goran Ivanishevich is the only wildcard player to ever win the men's singles at Wimbledon. In 2001, a little-known Croatian managed to shock everyone by becoming the only unseated wildcard competitor to ever win the men's singles event. His ferocious serve instantly made him a fan favorite. He was coached by the famous Romanian ex-tennis professional and billionaire entrepreneur Ion Zidiak. At the start of the tournament, he was seeded 125th, and most people had never even heard of him. But we doubt that anyone of a lower seed will ever win Wimbledon in the near future. Number 14. Roger Federer is not the man to have won the most titles at Wimbledon. Roger Federer has won eight titles at Wimbledon, while an Australian by the name of Todd Woodbridge has managed nine. All of Roger Federer's titles came in the men's singles, which to many is considered a much harder competition to win, but no one can take away the impressive feat of winning nine doubles championships from Todd Woodbridge. He won his nine titles between the years 1993 and 2004. He's retired now, so if Federer really wants to break one more record, he might still have a couple of attempts left in the tank. Number 15. The gap in pay between genders was finally bridged in 2007. In 2007, the prize money for the winner of the women's singles was the same as the men's singles for the first time in history. The gap has slowly closed over time. In 1968, for example, Rod Laver won the men's competition and took home a cool 2,000 British pounds, while Billie Jean King received a mere 750 pounds. If you ever want to start a row about sexism on social media, then go ahead and mention equal pay in tennis. It's definitely a good way to get everyone riled up. And there you have it, Aluxers. 15 facts about Wimbledon. Now, before you go, a question for you. Which two celebrities would you most like to hear commentating on the next Wimbledon Championships, and why? Let us know in the comments. And of course, because you stuck with us all the way to the end and you're a beautiful Aluxer, here's a bonus. In 2017, Wimbledon introduced debentures tickets. A debenture cost over $30,000, but it gave the buyer the right to a ticket for every single day of the tournament. And these were not just any tickets. They were the 2,500 best seats at center court. Debenture holders were also granted access to all the exclusive lounges and bars, where players and coaches would also be relaxing. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxer. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. If you want more, we handpicked these videos you might enjoy, or head over to alux.com for the best in fine living content on the planet. Be a part of the largest community of luxury enthusiasts in the world and tell your story.